I'm exhausted. Impact was a show. <laughs> that segment. It was... There's nothing terrible on it, but I, I found it mostly kind of boring, honestly. They were in England, so Bad Influence came out in kilts and Braveheart makeup. They said it was Throwback Thursday. They were throwing back to the 13th century, paying tribute to the true warriors of the United Kingdom, the Scots! It's got massive heat. They, uh, they blamed Daniel's loss last week to Jeff Hardy and specifically his makeup because it was toxic and it had sent Daniels into shock. He vowed to win the world title someday and defend it against the English because there's nobody easier to beat. This brought Magnus out. should mention that the, uh, the crowd and the building was one of uh, the coolest looking, seriously, in, in TNA, TNA history. Uh, there's a lot of sweetening going on, I noticed, throughout the show, but as far as visual appeal, they should never leave this building. So Magnus said that uh, basically he he accepted their challenge to fight an Englishman, and a brawl broke out, and he sent them both packing. Keneally said Magnus was, quote, slinging them around like haggis. No one should sling around haggis. It's Kennelly, by the way, I was alerted. It is Kennelly? Yeah. I like Keneally. So he cut a promo on the Aces and Eights. Like Kennelly from Hell? Just remember that. Mm. And uh, he called out Devon because they had beat him up last time he'd been seen. Magnus and Devon had a completely forgettable average match. Magnus appeared to have a, the uh, win with a mention no good driver. Aces and Eights hit the ring for the DQ, but he fought off Devon and Doc and Mike Knox by himself. These invaders blow. I uh, was annoyed with the finish. You were busy playing Mighty Bomb Jack. This actually was a pretty decent match. And Magnus got over huge! So he comes out, he gets over huge. Everybody loves Magnus. He challenges Devon. Devon comes out, titles on the line. They have a, a back and forth, pretty good match. And then the geeks just ran in for the DQ. And I was like, you had a chance here. In the UK to make Magnus a star in one night, as best as can be done in 2013. All he had to do was have him beat Devon and win the title. But no, they had to have a disqualification when Geeks ran in after I devoted all of this time and effort into watching this match and watching this guy get over with the crowd he's in front of. That'd be one thing if, for example, Miz was in LA. And Antonio Cesaro was the champion. And it's like, all right, Miz got over big. But you know what? Now is not the time to take the title off Antonio Cesaro. What's the deal with Devon? What the hell does Devon need the television title for? Well, so you got to protect that prestigious Aces and Eights winning streak. So he can have a bad match on television every week? There's like no single reason anyone could give me as to why Devon needed to keep the TV title and you couldn't have just had Magnus beat him and win the title and get over as a babyface and maybe make something resembling a star in TNA. Instead, we just got a lame DQ finish. Was annoyed! Bully Ray and Brooke and Sting were trying to figure out if Hulk would be there. Joe Park came to the ring to call somebody out. Before he could, Robbie E and Robbie T interrupted. Robbie E started running down the UK. This pissed off Robbie T because, of course, he is Welsh. That amused me. He apologized. Said Robbie T was basically American anyway. He dared Park to pick him and Joe accepted. So we had Joe Park versus Robbie E. Robbie E is totally underutilized. He's funny and he can work. And uh, Joe Park is progressing. He went from not being able to wrestle at all to being a shitty guy with like two moves. And now he is a pro wrestler. Who just is a very, very limited archaic moveset. He does an Ohio Valley yeah. opening match. Yes. He does body slams and arm drags a lot. Great. Yes. And uh, finally, he hit a big fired up comeback and he had a belly to belly suplex and a middle rope splash. I told you from the 70s. Uh, for the win. And he celebrated this win over Robbie E. like Kurt Angle in Atlanta in 1996. Joe Park has got by far the best facial expressions in all of wrestling. And he is a man who wore a mask for a decade. Yes. yes. Amazing. He did have the best celebration ever when he beat Robbie E. He got the W. 
You got a pinfall over Robbie E. Bobby Roode and Austin Aries got a promo in the ring. They said a lot of people in this company were stealing money. But he and Roode continue to be robbed. They vowed to win all the titles, including the women's belt. And they were going to start with the tag titles. They started running down the champs until Hernandez and Chavo came out. And Hernandez and Chavo, their rebuttal to this verbal duel. Well, Chavo. God, they're terrible baby faces. Hernandez didn't say anything. Chavo whined about how they had cheated last time, and he's very annoying. And eventually, it was somehow agreed that even though their, their claim was Rude and Aries did not deserve a title shot because they had never been in a tag team match, or they were not a tag team. So to prove that they were worthy of a tag team shot, they would have a singles match. So it was Austin versus Chavo. Here's where I really noticed how much crowd sweetening they were doing as the crowd in the background sure was not moving for a crowd that got louder and uh, quieter at various points. So Chavo hit the frog splash. There was distraction from Ruder Hernandez and Austin Aries then kicked Chavo right in the face with both feet. And hit him with a brain buster for the win. And that was that. So they get a title shot. Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, Garrett Bischoff, and Wes Briscoe had a meeting. Kurt wanted Anderson one-on-one -on -one in a cage. Joe guaranteed him that would happen. Wes and Garrett wanted to help. Joe told them to fuck off. <laughs> he may as well have used those exact words. And, uh, you know, this is not a tape show. to spoil this. Joe deserved to get laid out and turned on. He's a dick. You know, what's funny is like, uh, I got to say one thing about Samoa Joe. His character is consistent. He hates everyone. Whether he is a baby face or a heel, he's just a giant cock to everybody all the time. He's always in a bad mood. Yeah. He's always pissed off. It's he's a always a dick. Remarkably consistent character. Yeah, but the problem is exactly in this in this scenario here, it's like. I did not feel bad for Joe getting jumped. No. He was a complete dick to these two. He had it coming. Bully came out with Brooke. Beg Hulk to lift his suspension. It says Sting was the one man who could get Hulk to do it. Sting came out. He got the crowd to chant Hulk's name. And then Hulk Hogan appeared. I'm trying to think of how much money I would pay to watch Hulk Hogan versus Great Khali in a foot race. These are two unhealthy men. So Hulk talked for a while, ran his mouth like he always does. So he always did the right thing about 7,000 times. Finally, reinstated Bully. And then he booked Bully and Sting versus two aces and ace guys in a tables match for next week. And he shook Ray's hand, and he put Brooke in Ray's arms, and he gave her not the thumbs up. He gave them the A-OK -okay sign. <laughs> He's A-OK. -okay. He is A-OK. -okay. Saw Velvet's boobs walking around backstage. I don't know what she was wearing, but it appeared that she was measuring her bust on the way to the ring. Yeah. You can check this out. I'm not kidding. We had the announcement from Dixie that Impact would be uh, going on the road starting in March, live from Chicago. Velvet Sky and Jane Storm versus Tara By and Jesse. By the way, that uh, Dixie thing, it's like they plugged it. I mean, they, they plugged this uh, the past week. They plug this on Impact. They plug this on Twitter. They plug, 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 plug this big announcement. And literally upon coming back from a commercial break, it was a brief taped segment that was then over. I was like, wow. They sure built that up and it was nothing. You know? Yeah. I thought she'd at least come to the ring and announce, you guys in the UK are so great. We've decided to go on the road, and we're going to come back from television. And everyone would go, yay! Instead, it was like she'd sent a tout. <laughs> it was, actually. That is true. Uh, Velvet and James Storm versus Tara and Jesse. James Storm officially has nothing to do anymore. Just team with random people with random other feuds. What ever happened to AJ? I uh, vanished. Hmm. Flat out vanished. So... The highlight here was when Kennelly, he says something that annoyed Taz, and Taz, literally on the air, threatened to have him murdered. Yes. <laughs> Kennelly said something, and Taz begins with, what are you, a smartass? And then, in fact, he threatened to kill him. Threatened to kill him. 
Would you like to end up six feet under, I believe he said? He threatened to put a hit out yeah. on Todd Kennelly. And, and like, Taz was very believable. <laughs> if I heard Todd Kennelly, I'd quit being a smartass right now. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. So, Velvet Pintara with a pedigree. Uh, Storm didn't even stick around to celebrate with her. He just left. I'm done with this shit. Had an interview with Hulk talking backstage. and I think Taz threatened that he'd end up in a body bag. That sounds right. Yeah. I think that's what he said. Which is not just, like, chilling. <laughs> no, he meant dead. Yeah. So, Hulk's, Hulk's talking, talking backstage and cutting a promo with the camera guy. And he says Ray had taken a beating for his doctor. That meant he was okay. And he... Said they were family and they were in this together and his wedding gift wedding gift was going to be to let Ray kill the Aces and Eights dudes in a tables match. And he finishes up his promo and he's about to stop and before the cameraman can just hit the stop button, Brooke pipes in with, oh, that's like giving candy to a baby. She just couldn't let this in without getting a word in. She had to get her camera time. Hell yeah. That annoyed me. Anderson did a promo saying he got more support and brotherhood from the Aces and Eights than he ever had in TNA. I'm sure that's true. I've been very critical of Anderson, but uh, he's actually been very good the last... Uh, I think part of it is I don't have to listen to that stupid ring entrance anymore with the mic. And uh, I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It's like when you see him do promos or in skits backstage... He looks like just he's he's a total burnout that doesn't give a shit and is collecting a paycheck. And then he gets to the ring, he's been having good matches with everybody. So I don't know. But uh I've been a Mr. Anderson fan for the last uh month or so. Wow. And he sure as hell worked his ass off in the main event. That is true. Granted it was with Kurt Angle, but still. You know? Kurt Angle has had poor matches with people, including Devon. But he had a hell of a match with Mr. Anderson in the main event. And that was the main event. Kurt Angle versus Mr. Anderson in a cage. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Joe was taken out backstage. Deservedly so. Hope they heard him real good. Uh, Kurt ordered Garrett to stay there and watch... He ordered Garrett to stay there and watch Joe, and he dragged West to the ring with him to watch his back. Then we had Kurt and Anderson in a cage. Taz was gloating about his win over Kurt at the Royal Rumble in, I believe, 2000. Uh, Anderson did, in fact, look better here than he has in months. I don't know how much of that was Angle. I don't know how much of it was Anderson, but it's true. Probably quite a bit was Angle, no. to be fair, although I think Mr. Anderson would admit the same. Yeah. Uh, a- Angle was going out of his way to, uh, I mean, it's not like Kurt Angle ever has, half-asses it, but he was he was in full Kurt Angle mode this evening. They were fighting on the ropes. You know, it was a cage match. They're standing on the top row fighting, and Anderson drops down, and he crotches Kurt, and Kurt... Like, he fell, like, he weighed about eight times his actual weight. And right on his balls. Balls first, right on the ropes. Mm. You could not have done this any more painful. Did a uh, top rope angle slam, kicked out of the mic check, and uh, Anderson was trying something in the corner, and Kurt powerbombed him hard, and Anderson kicked out of that, and Kurt hit the ankle lock and won. This was a hell of a TV main event. So Angle wins. And a masked Aces and Eights dude runs out and climbs the cage. All by himself. All by himself. And Wes unlocks the cage, climbs in the door, locks the cage behind him. So you've got Kurt and Wes squaring off against one masked man. Anderson is still dead in the corner. And then the masked man pulls off his mask. He reveals Garrett Bischoff. Everyone is confused. And when Kurt goes after him, Wes clips his knee from behind, and he put the boots to him. And as the beating is commencing, Taz is screaming something about how a plan came together. Anderson lost. <laughs> Your plan is Anderson he, losing. Angle won the battle, but he lost the war. This invasion is shit. I The thing that annoyed me about it was... I, lo- I thought the cage match was great. I thought the reveal... I mean, the fans did get into the reveal. Uh, I thought it was a good touch when Wes Briscoe undid his uh, ponytail so you could see that he was, in fact, the long-haired guy in Aces and Eights. Oh, yeah. That's but good point. the one thing I didn't like, and actually I really didn't like this, is 
The storyline has been that these men are masks and their anonymity is their power. Yeah. Now, why the fuck their anonymity is their power, I still don't have that explained to me. I thought their power was just in their numbers. You know what I mean? Like, is is was Ace and Nate's better off before Mike Knox was unmasked? Like, what the hell difference does it make whether he had a mask on or not? But that's what they say. The, the, the power is in the anonymity. And every time somebody gets unmasked, they are threatened to be kicked out of the group or they have their legs broken or whatever. Actually, that never happened. But the point is, you're not supposed to lose your mask. You 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 suffer if you lose your mask in Aces and Eights. So why did Garrett and West Briscoe voluntarily unmask and reveal themselves? Why didn't they just beat up Kurt in their masks as usual? Why are they unmasked now? Hopefully this is explained on television because it makes, in fact, not a lick of sense. Of course, the strength and anonymity makes no sense either. But I am I am a friendly enough viewer to go along with that storyline. However, this storyline now makes no sense because these guys voluntarily unmasked. So that I did not like. You know, on top of that, this is a minor detail, but Wes looks so much cooler with his mask on. Well, maybe you'll put it back on. Yeah, just put the mask back. It's a badass mask, dude. And maybe I'm nitpicking, but I did. I was mildly annoyed when uh, when uh, Garrett unmasked and uh, everybody started to boo. And maybe he's just a wonderful heel. But when they all booed and like the attention, when you're Garrett, the attention should have been on Kurt. Like we fooled Kurt. Let's kick the shit out of Kurt. Let's keep our eyes on him. Instead, Garrett had to look around at the crowd with a proud smile on his face and say, look at this heat I'm getting. I am a heel now. That annoyed me. Pay attention to the task at hand, which is kicking the shit out of Kurt Angle. Anyway, that was the Impact Show. I thought the show was solid. It wasn't a bad show. It wasn't a great show. But it certainly had a hell of a main event. And uh, and it was a main event atmosphere for TNA. And I don't know if they're going to get crowds like this when they leave the UK. Like uh, Dixie promised they're coming to our town. I strongly suspect they're not going to go to the Eagles Lodge in Bothell. So my guess would be Kent, which uh, drew about, I think, 800 last time, which is not going to look like the UK. In fact, that would be less people than show up at the Impact Zone. So not sure, but uh, hey, they're trying something, so good for them. Mike, did you see Impact this week? I did indeed. What'd you think? I, you know, <laughs> I, I like the, the 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 British crowd. Obviously, you know, you get a, a massive crowd when you when you go over there. Uh, and they respond to everything well. You know, I, I got a kick out of some things that I didn't think I was actually going to get some enjoyment out of. You know, the the, uh, the segment with Rockstar Spud, I thought most people didn't watch British Boot Camp. So I thought the way that thing went, they didn't really say who was who in the beginning. And it just kind of ended abruptly with them saying, you know, Spud won. And I didn't think they did a good enough job in kind of laying that video package out. But then again, when it came to, to him and Robbie T and Robbie E, I was actually greatly entertained with that. Um, and, and the show ended feel good with, with how it's been going with Aces and Eights anyway. Um, you know, you, you get the it, cornball comedy, obviously, with, with you know the old guy Sting and Hogan and his new son-in-law, Bully Ray. And, you know, Brooks acting being terrible. But, but that, I thought, was... You know, it, it was what it was as far as a match, but as far as being a, you know, a, a happy way to, to end the evening, I, I thought it was good. And obviously, Aries and Rude together winning the tag titles, I thought that was a plus. So I, I really can't complain too much about Impact. Yeah, I thought the, uh, I've always thought that the the UK crowd is just, I don't know why they leave. <laughs> It, it, the, the show looks so much more major league. They've got a huge crowd. The place is going nuts for everything. I mean, uh, they did that sometimes in the Impact Zone. The Impact Zone was hit and miss, but it always looked it looked minor league because they were in a thousand seat building. And uh, the UK crowd, just the the show was packed and it was just great. I thought the tag match was awesome with uh, Aries and Rude. Thank 
God winning the tag team titles, hopefully leading to a feud with Daniels and Kazarian. If there is a uh, a wrestling God, that feud will take place. And uh, I just I just really enjoyed the show. I mean, Rockstar Spud obviously was this was like his big debut. I mean, he'd done plenty of shows before, and and uh, he'd done British Boot Camp. But as far as like you know, uh, a performance, having to do a performance in front of a crowd of that size on, you know, it wasn't a live show, but it was live to tape. And I thought he, I thought he did extremely well for like, this would be his big break. Basically, he was the winner of the, uh, the British boot camp. I thought he did a, a very good job. And, uh, the one thing I thought was hilarious was, do they really have to put him next to Robbie T so that he'd look like four feet tall? I think with the way they did that with Robbie E jumping on his back and saying, hold me back, bro, I know what you mean, but I think because of what they were going to do with obviously Robbie T being Welsh and, and them playing to the U.K. crowd that way, I, I thought that was actually okay. And frankly, if you're going to have the name Rockstar Spud, it's like having the name Spanky. I mean, it's not the most intimidating thing in the world. So you go off of his look and his attitude and obviously – uh, you know, I guess you can go tongue, tongue in cheek with, with with how small he is. Um, you know, I, and to be honest, he looked more comfortable than Wes Briscoe did. Which you know, immediately now that the hair comes down and and he's in 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 the group, I, I he did not come across with as much force as I honestly thought he was going to. Jeff Hardy wasn't on the show. He's uh, he's a felon. I guess is that the is that the proper term? What 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 would be the proper term for uh, for what happened with Jeff Hardy? Uh, well, I missed something there with Jeff Hardy. Is is he a felon? Did he did he did he miss his uh, the meeting with his PO? What happened? I, I guess a a felon. I'm trying to think of the proper term to not uh, to not get us in trouble here. But uh, Jeff Hardy had a had a run in with the law, and uh, and and uh, served a little bit of time. Anyway, he couldn't make it into the UK, but. He has turned his life around, and uh, he has also just signed a two-year contract extension with uh, Impact Wrestling. He'll be there through February of 2015, and uh, he is their current champion. I know a lot of people in the UK were very upset because he was he was billed for the tour, and then as a result of his uh, his former legal issues, he uh, well he couldn't go, and so they just didn't have him go. And a lot of people were very upset about that. Well, I, I guess, I presume they figured that they'd be able to pull some strings or something and get him into the country, but they couldn't. But uh, he is the champion. He'll be back on television when they come back to the U.S. for the next set of tapings. He's going to be on uh, on television for at least the next two years. They're going to do some mu- music projects with him. I know he has stated that he wants to perform a song at Bound for Glory this year. And uh, he is... He is probably still their only real life singular legitimate draw. Uh, the the pay per views when Jeff Hardy headlines do about three thousand buys more than the pay per views when he's not headlining, and uh, he has moved numbers. So uh, he's stuck with them. Maybe that's the wrong term. He is uh, with TNA <laughs> for better or worse for the next two years, and uh, hopefully everything works out great for all sides. I, I hope so. I, I really do. I was actually watching the K-Fabe commentaries, uh, Botchamania one, where they, they brought up, you know, fans got to, to vote and they brought up uh, one of the biggest botches of the last couple of years, at least in that terminology, Jeff Hardy's match against Sting, where he was in no condition to perform. And yeah. I saw the match he had on, in the Tokyo Dome in New Japan against Naito, which was supposed to be one of Naito's big singles breakout matches after he got back from CMLL. Uh, and it's just, I, I hope everything does work out well. And really, you're exactly right. They're actually stuck with each other. They need Jeff Hardy because he does actually move the needle a little bit and sell merchandise. And he needs them because they have been very tolerant, whether they, they should have or not. They've been very, very tolerant. And they need, you know, again, all the help they can get. Well, with the uh, exception of, I guess, what was described as one hiccup, uh, Jeff Hardy has been a model employee uh, since he claimed he turned his life around. There have been uh, pretty much zero problems with him since that time. So it's good news for him and his family, obviously, and everybody in TNA. 
And, and you know what else? What what makes him really happy? No one's messed with his painting, man. That's right. That's right. I haven't heard a lot about Jeff Hardy paintings lately. Just his music. Just his face, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do Impact. Impact was a show. Uh, it was the last show in London, which made me sad because these shows have been uh, pretty good shows and the environment has been better than the Impact Zone ever, ever, ever was. So Hulk came out. He said last week he had been interrupted before he had a chance to name the number one contender. You recall he had set up four matches and whoever impressed him the most in these four matches would get the title shot. Well, with an extra week to think about it, he said, I have decided to give the title shot to Bully Ray, who was not in one of the four matches. And somehow the eight men involved did not come out outraged. James Storm and Magnus in particular, who won their matches, they were fine with uh, the title shot going to someone else. So Ray came out. He was confused. He was surprised. He claimed he had partially torn his quad in the tables match. Hulk called him the toughest guy in the company. Ray said all he wanted to do was to make Hulk proud, and if uh, he wanted to win the world title because it would make Hulk and Brooke happy. For tonight, he wanted a six-man with the aces and eights against himself, Sting, and Hulk Hogan. And he gave Hulk the big finger point, and Hulk sold it like Ric Flair, and Hulk said, all right, I'll wrestle. Out of the blue, just like that. After over a year. And then he just walked to the back, and it was no big deal. Boy, uh, Bully Ray was uh, an insincere baby face here. <laughs> yes. I love it. This is going to be so awesome. I like this slow turn that you see coming. I hope they don't swerve us. I'll be really upset, for example, if Hulk Hogan joins Aces and Eights. Yeah, that would suck. I'll be infuriated. Although it's been a long time since I've been infuriated about this uh, program. So, uh, so far, so good. We had a fun segment that I, I could not do justice to, but Rude and Aries were backstage bickering when Daniels and Kazarian arrived. They talked about the rate man tag tonight and who would be in charge. And Daniels and Kazarian told them to follow our lead. And that led to Aries and Rude saying, we're not going to follow your lead, we're going to follow my lead. And the guy said, no, we'll follow my lead and blah, blah, blah. We then had the best eight-man tag team match of all time ever. Frankie Kazarian, Chris Daniels, Austin Aries, and Bobby Rude Against Chavo Guerrero, Hernandez, or as Daniels called him, Sean, and James Storm and Joe Park. So first they did a bunch of comedy spots with Joe Park, where he's he's still new at this whole wrestling thing, but he was uh, accidentally beating guys up, and sometimes even in spite of himself. It was during this match, we got our first plug of King Moe's fight. Oh. It, it just... I'm, it got funnier. That's all I can say. Yeah. So, uh, Joe is running wild, and uh, while he is uh, green, a greenhorn, as he once said, he's still very, very large, and so none of the heels wanted to tag in with him. And finally, Daniels cut him off, and instantly everyone else stuck their hand out and said, tag me, tag me! That was awesome. The, uh, finally, he got a hot tag to, uh, Storm. Rude and Aries walked out, left Cass and Daniels alone, and everyone hit a big move, and it all led up to uh, they brought Park into the ring, and they helped him climb to the middle rope. He had a big splash for the win. He had a better celebration here than Kurt Angle did when he won his gold medal. <laughs> everyone was cheering and going crazy. This was so much fun. Joe Park is the best. This match was the match of the year. Not really. But so far, I, I seriously enjoyed this match. It's just fun pro wrestling. Yes, everybody in this, every single character in this match was great. Everybody was well, maybe not Mexican American so much, but all the heels, Joe Park, James Storm. I mean, it was uh, it was pretty phenomenal. We had Robbie E versus Rock Star Spud. Yeah, they have not explained what makes this man a rock star. For that matter, they are not explaining what makes him a spud. Well, he's a spud because he's the size of uh, a potato. Yeah, he's small. That's a very skinny potato. He is a small, 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 small wrestler. He looked totally fine out there. 
He did, uh, he ran wild. He went for a top rope leg drop. He got, got the crowd going crazy. And then, uh, Robbie E moved and Spud landed right on his ass. Apparently his finisher's a leg drop off the top rope. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Uh, so. That's what they were pointing out as a yeah. big finish. And it was a leg drop off the top rope. And Kennelly knew this. Mm-hmm. So, Robbie E tried to grab a clipboard from Robbie T at this point. I don't know why he was winning. The ref was right there looking at him. Robbie too wouldn't let it go, and they had a tug of war, and then Robbie E turned around and Spud had a roll up for the win. The two Robbies had to stare down. E was screaming at him and shoving him and pie facing him, and finally he slapped him hard across the face. And Robbie T tore off his shirt. And then Robbie E became great. Or at least uh, he's always been great, but he he demonstrated his greatness here. He recoiled in horror at the sight of Rob Terry with a shirt off. He attempted to flee, but he got trapped in the ropes in the funniest manner possible. Finally, he escaped and he went to the back. And uh, Robbie E is great. I forgot what I got, what I got out of this. He's pretty good. And a four-way women's match. Tara versus Brooke Tessmacher versus Velvet Sky and Gail Kim. Brooke Hogan came out to watch. Now, what did you say, Brian, about her entrance? <laughs> you remind me. I've forgotten. I said that her entrance is all about shaking her boobies. Actually, what you said, close, you said she came out and shook her titties. I never use that terminology. You rewound it to demonstrate... And then you imitated it. I did no such thing. I am. I was so disturbed. <laughs> I got some cleavage on me. So. Brooke's entrance consists of her music plays. She walks down the entrance ramp. And then she looks right into the camera. And she shakes her... Chest? Mammaries. She does. That is her entrance. And then she continues walking to the ring. And in fact, I wasn't sure that everyone in the room knew what I meant when I said that or when I rewound it and watched it again. So I proceeded to shake my heaving pectoral muscles in a sultry manner. That's not the word I would have used. Vinny nearly died. I honest to God didn't think you were you were uh, you were looking. I actually demonstrated this for my wife. That's even creepier. Like, look, I can shake my titties. And then I looked up and you looked down quickly. Oh, I was looking down. Oh, I felt down. Things happen, everybody. So they had a match. Uh, Why was Brooke there? I was too busy watching her, her shimmy. I don't even know what the point of her being there was. To watch. Why? I don't know. All right. She announced she was going to be there to watch. She came out to watch. She was there and she watched. I, I don't have a better answer for you. So it's a good question. That's the best I can do. So they did a uh, parade of finishers where everyone hit a big move. And Tara hit a big moonsault, but then turned around and uh, Velvet hit her with a pedigree. And uh, Gail stole the pin, which makes no sense since it was an elimination match. But uh, Tara was out first, so we were guaranteed a new champion. They did a... Uh, the powerbomb superplex spot, which is scary when anyone does it. It's horrifying when Velvet Sky is involved. I don't think anyone died. Velvet went on to pin Tessmacher, my notes read. Don't know how. I missed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They showed no replay. Velvet was wearing uh, carpeted boots like Bruiser Brodies, so they, they were hot pink. Not like Bruiser Brodies. So she tries to sunset flip out of the corner, and Gail grabs the ropes. And apparently this is a rules violation. I've actually seen, not in a long time, but I've seen this finish before. I, 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 uh, yeah, I, I never really thought about it till I watched it here. But, like, if you're being pinned, mm -hmm. and you grab the ropes, the referee has to break up the pin. But if someone does a sunset flip, and you grab the ropes, mm -hmm. that's not allowed. Yeah. And I never really thought about it until tonight, of all times. You've seen the spot a million times where the, the baby face goes for the sunset flip. Heel grabs the top rope. 
Referee tells him to let go. Heel doesn't let go. Referee kicks his hands right. and falls into the sunset flip. Yeah. It, it's seen it a million times. I've seen this all my life, and it's never made sense to me. But it never, it never, I, 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 I don't know why. Maybe it's because they did like a setup that made sense uh, in the course of the match uh, to make the sunset flip spot look good. But for some reason, to, on in the show today, like the ropes were grabbed, and so Taryn, Tiffany was like, with both hands, trying to violently break the grip. Yeah. And I was just watching it like, why are you doing this? Why can't, why isn't she allowed to grab the ropes? So I actually don't understand this rule at all. It makes no sense to me. Regardless, Taryn uh, yanked Gail off the ropes and Velvet hit her pedigree and won. So she, she's the new champion. And Brooke presented her with a belt and they celebrated. I always thought the thing was like, a heel's trying to grab the ropes for leverage, like on a pinfall. Well, yeah, that's the key. Because you can't you can't pin somebody and grab the ropes for – that's not allowed. That, that would be illegal. But if you're just standing there and someone's going for a move and you grab the ropes to stop it, like, why is that not allowed? I don't know. I was just baffled here. <laughs> we had a – Sting met with Hulk Hogan, and they didn't really have much to say. So Sting walks out the door, he walks three feet down the hallway, he walks into the very next door, and there's Bully Ray, and Ray says, how did it go? Like, you couldn't hear any of this. So the establishment was fine, Ray was marking out for getting a tag with Sting and Hogan, and Sting walked out the door and he said, let's go tear some heads off. Only he said it not enthusiastically, not as a battle cry, but almost like it was a chore. Let's go tear some heads off. Made me laugh. Samoa Joe versus Garrett Bischoff. All Garrett had to do was sell for Joe's offense, so this was his best match ever. And uh, finally, Wes Briscoe hit the ring for the DQ. Joe kicked his ass too, because the Aces and Eight suck. They finally overwhelmed him. Then Angle ran down to chase them off. Then Angle grabbed a mic, and he announced that at lockdown, it would be himself versus Wes in a cage. To which Taz basically re replied, Why is this allowed? What? <laughs> Why is he allowed to make his own matches? Yes, and we don't have an answer for Taz's question. I don't know why. Taz is getting screwed here. Or at least uh, at least Wes is. Kenny King versus RVD. We had more uh, King Mo related humor. Mike Tanay asked Taz, how difficult is it to do what King Mo was doing? <laughs> Taz said, very difficult. I'll say. Uh-huh. For those of you listening that don't know what happened... Uh, King Mo in the uh, semifinals of this Bellator tournament got knocked out. Yep. And uh, he was expected to uh, win the tournament, become the uh, champion. And uh, he, of course, is signed to uh, Bellator and TNA. Yeah. And uh, has never wrestled a single time for TNA, I might add. But he has been training in Ohio Valley. But, uh, yeah, looks like he'll be perhaps debuting sooner rather than later now. <laughs> he might. He might. Oops. Yeah. Real fighting. Yep. Stuff happens. So, uh, Kenny King wrestled Rob Van Dam in a match that was very, very fun for, to watch. I don't think it was very fun to wrestle in, particularly if you are Kenny King. Everything Rob did looked like it killed him. I know it's hardly new. And finally, he killed him with Rolling Thunder and then killed him with a frog splash and he won. It was fun. We had Brooke and Hulk walking backstage. She wanted to make sure he was okay to wrestle. He assured her everything would be fine. He'd be fighting alongside Bully Ray and Sting. For the second week in a row, he calls Sting the greatest wrestler that ever lived. Huh. So he goes through a door, and Brooke says, quote, Have fun! Have fun. Have fun. Like she forgot it's supposed to be real. Like he was not going... Like he was going to go work a match. Yeah. Have fun, Dad. Be safe. Have fun. This is going out there to go to war with the men who have a long history of violently injuring people and ruined her wedding. Have fun. It's time for the main event. Devon and Doc and Mr. Anderson against Sting and Ray and Hulk Hogan. Only they played Hulk's music and he never showed up. So they did a three-on-two match. It was fine. 
Ray came in supposedly with a torn quad muscle. They never worked that into the match. At Actually, all. I think it's really it's a real torn quad muscle. Uh, that's right. Dave did say that. So I uh, made a hot tag with Sting. Sting ran wild, and they were going to do the was up drop when the aces and eights appeared on the ramp. They were holding Brooke hostage. They also had a beaten Hulk. Ray limped out to make the save. The aces and eights released the Hogan's. Hulk said things like "miney, miney." Sting was left Poor alone Bully in the Ray ring. trying to run up that ramp with a torn quad. Hobble, 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 hobble. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah. So uh, Sting was left alone, and they kicked him in the face, and then they pinned him. The aces and eights won a match. Yes. Uh, write this down, everyone. On uh, Thursday, February 21st, 2013, the Aces and Ace won a wrestling contest. Yeah. Astounding. They should have celebrated like Joe Park. They did. They, they should have. And that was the show. That was the show. It was fun. It was paced well. Everything made sense. If you have this, you should watch that eight-man tag, which really was awesome. That, uh, otherwise, watch You want to know time. why that goddamn eight-man tag was awesome? Sure. Not just because of the heel team and Joe Park and James Storm, but when Aries and Rude walked out, we're going to get the feud, Vinny. We are going to get Daniels and Kazarian versus Rude and Aries. It's going to be fun. I cannot wait. Titles on the line. Rude and Aries against Daniels and Kazarian. For the tag team titles. I want them to come back to Kent with that match. So I can pay money to go see it with my own eyes. Live. That's the correct answer, yes. Yeah, that's how much I want to see this. I want to pay for I liked Impact. That was it. Oh. So, uh, Bully, and Bully, Ray, uh, Bully Ray and Brooke arrive at the building. The uh, invisible interviewer people who always harass the wrestlers... Trying to get updated on Hulk's condition. They had nothing to say other than it's bad. Bully Ray came out for a promo. I got to say something about this show. I know it's a trend in television nowadays. This reality look to the camera. Where like you walk into a room. You zoom in. The camera's not steady. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's been annoying me for a decade, honestly. Do you have to hire such shitty camera people? Yeah. <laughs> You zoom in so it's completely unfocused. Then you have to r manually focus it, and then you're you're stumbling around. I mean, really? Yeah, it just really really hit me during this show. Like these these camera guys are like they're completely incompetent at their jobs, and I guess that's supposed to uh, bring a a sense of reality to the program. I disagree. Yeah, it brings a, a, an air of crappiness to the program. So Bully Ray. You know, they taped uh, the past month. For, the past month of this show, we're all taped in a short period of time in England. So we, this is the first time we've seen him in a few weeks. And uh, he's clearly a Hogan because he's getting pythons. Big arms in this dude. He vowed revenge on the aces and eights. Mentioned Devon by name. Called out Jeff Hardy, who is still world champion. He said that they were going to wrestle for the most prestigious singles title in our industry, which is not true. He said he didn't want the title shot just because he was Hulk's son-in-law. Jeff cut a promo using words such as choosed and clum. Finally said may the best man win. Didn't address really Ray's concern about whether Ray deserved the shot or not. Bad influence came out. They were fantastic. Kaz said that uh, Hulk was giving Ray the shot because he needed somebody to tweet tasteless photos of Brooke. Great line. Daniel said a million funny things, including calling uh, Bully, Ray Bully Raymond. He compared himself to Luthez. Eventually, a brawl broke out, and Ray issued a challenge for the uh, tag team match for tonight. A fun segment. Sting and Magnus were in Sting's office having a conversation. I didn't really figure out what was going on here until the end of the segment. But Sting is in charge of Team TNA for lockdown. And so he had a list of names he was considering, and Magnus was campaigning to be on the team. Velvet Sky versus Tara. Oh. With Gale on commentary. <laughs> and uh, Taryn Terrell, the referee. First of all, 
I'm going to go to this link I found earlier. Hopefully it still will bring out the photo. But uh, they did a Q&A session with Taryn Terrell on Twitter. If you go to hashtag ask Taryn, he had a photo of Taryn Terrell using Best a computer. Best photo ever. <laughs> Best photo ever. She looks at the computer the way, well, the way honestly. Uh, 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 she from, looks like it, like she's a uh, uh, some sort of scientist that is uh, examining molecules in a microscope. Yeah, she's very thoughtful here. I'm just, I, I just looked at the photo and stopped. I haven't even looked at any of these questions yet. KJ Glow wants to know: Was there a particular match that got you interested in wrestling? <laughs> New Legacy Inc. asks, are you a lizard? <laughs> are you a lizard? <laughs> are you a lizard? 18 days left. Asks, favorite category on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I should read the rest of these. Double D asks, do you cut? I shouldn't laugh at that. That's terrible. That's a terribly offensive. He could have meant cut the grass. I suppose. Cut corners. Uh, Cut in line. Somebody, I have another question here. I see Terrence's response. <laughs> Caleb from Hell asks, "Why did you pull Gail Kim's arms off the ropes in the four-way match? She'd been doing nothing to Vel to Velvet Sky, who, by the way, Velvet Sky's Twitter is Vel Vel Holler. Holla. So that's his question. Why did you pull Gail Kim's arms off the ropes? To which Terrence Terrell replied, "She was breaking the rules." I only let rules be broken in the bedroom. Wow! Which, by the way, what does that mean? I, I don't want to know. Maro Sudati asks, did you like ruin Drew McIntyre's career? So hold on a second. She 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 made a comment about uh, breaking the rules in the bedroom, but mm -hmm. refused to acknowledge her favorite category on Pornhub? Apparently, yes. Oh. Now I'm curious. <laughs> Somebody wants to know what our favorite football team is. Will you be competing in match soon? What's been your best moment in wrestling? She had a lot of them. I worship Dolph. That's how they, this person identifies himself. Asks Turin Terrell. Think about this now. <laughs> of all the questions you could ask Taryn Terrell, what is the best book you have ever read? <laughs> Did she answer? Uh, sadly, no. It's disappointing. A lot of people want to know if she's going to wrestle. What's your favorite match that you have refed? Because <laughs> you know you keep track. <laughs> that match with uh, Velvet and... Tara it was a good one. It's TNA coming. I guess that's it. Oh, that was fun. Oh, yeah. One shoe, new one showed up while I was there. I didn't know you were having a Q&A session. Do you feel nervous when you ref a match? All right. It was the last one. Hang on. I think I just closed a good one here. Why is pizza so evil yet so delicious? I was asked to Taryn Terrell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To which she replies, so many... Taryn Terrell said, so many calories, yet so many taste bud explo explosions. Oh, really? That's what it says. <laughs> and then he wrote, right. taste... <laughs> 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 so, now, before I get myself in trouble. So, it appears that about 40 questions have been asked, and she answered two. Uh, not very many of them, I... How about you ask, how fast can you type? <laughs> oh, God. All right, that's enough. So, that's what that's how Taryn Terrell spent her evening before this match. Then the match started and her evening went significantly downhill. I spent a lot of time trying to dissect this finish and what went wrong here. Jesse interfered. Taryn Terrell basically ejected him. So what happened was he pulled Velvet's leg right in front of the ref. So first, Taryn has to try to get largely out from the inside of the ring to the apron. Yes. 
So I first, I gotta make that note of that here. First, she tries to go between the top and the middle rope, but then she realizes that she's got legs. So then she goes out from between the top and the middle rope and tries to go underneath the middle and the bottom rope. So she ducks her way through there and uh, finally gets to the outside. And you have never seen someone eject anyone from any sport. I don't watch a lot of baseball, but every now and then I'll, I'll see a clip on TV at the gym of some umpire just flipping his lid and he's like, he's having a heart attack. He's red, spits flying, sweat everywhere. His hair is all matted up. That's nothing compared to what Taryn Terrell did here. She waved her arms. She shook her head. And she pelvis thrusted her hips and screamed and yelled. And right as she's ejecting the guy, which is always a big pop, Velvet is kicked in the back of the head, I believe, or vice versa. Something. Something. Somebody kicks somebody in the back of the head. So you had two big spots occurring at the same time. So it was impossible to concentrate on either. And thus, neither spot got over. And then we had the finish. Yeah, uh, the finish this sucked. was a botched pedigree. And he came out of the pin, and that was that. I'm updating my report. I forgot to mention how hard it was for her to get through the ropes. Hang on, everyone. It was like these ropes were uh, electrified. It was like they were covered in hot tar, and she was stuck to them. It's or or, or it's like she, they were a spider's web, and she was the fly. Yeah. I would imagine when you're on a uh, fishing vessel and they pull the net out of the sea and there's a dolphin caught in there, Taryn was the dolphin. Yeah. Or the tuna, actually. Either way. Vinny. It's a fish, Brian. Get your mind out of the gutter. So this match sucked. That's my, my point. That's what I'm getting at. Thank you. Yeah. There's a wacky skit backstage with Austin Aries and Chavo Hernandez. Uh, they established that Rude was not there. And they uh, set up Austin versus Hernandez for later. You talked earlier about the shaky cameras they have. They do this several times in Impact, well, where someone will be walking backstage just in the hallway, and they will ambush them and ask a question. It always seems like a dick move to me, honestly. Well, this uh, ambush interview with Kenny King was so improvised and so unplanned and so off the cuff that it was a two-camera setup. Incredibly stupid. So he went to confront RVD. He wanted Rob to admit that he was a better wrestler. Rob said, well, I am the champion, and I've beaten you twice, which is awesome. He offered Kenny one more chance tonight, and if Kenny won, he could be champion, and if Rob won, then Kenny had to leave the X Division forever. Austin Aries wrestled Hernandez. Hernandez, I think his entire wrestling career, has worn like khaki shorts or, or, or cargo pants. He finally got wrestling trunks, and now he looks enormous. He's always been enormous, but he looks even more enormous. Funny how that works. Yeah. So uh, Austin Aries is great. I know that's sunny news. He tried to use a belt. It got confiscated. The ref took the belt away, and as the ref's back was turned, Aries hit him with a chain and pinned him, stopping, by the way, to toss the chain into Hernandez's trunks. So even if they, even if they were found, he would have an alibi. So Austin gets the win. He's posing on the ropes. He's mocking Hernandez's pose. This was awesome. Austin Aries is fabulous. We had another meeting with uh, somebody trying to, to campaign to be on Sting's team at lockdown. It was Joe Park. Eating ribs. Eating a giant thing of ribs. And he's talking about how he wants to be in the team and how he's not a green hornet anymore. And Sting asks, asks him, you know what a rib is, right? And Joe hangs his head. And Joe has a moment of shame. He fights through it and admits, yes, Sting, yes, I do. And he moved on. And he was making his case and giving Sting a sales pitch. And in the middle of it, Sting, without saying a word, goes running out of the room to try to recruit Matt Morgan. <laughs> Morgan said that uh, Sting is a friend of Hulk's. Matt Morgan does not like Hulk. He wants nothing to do with Hulk or any of his friends. And he said no. Kenny King wrestled Rob Van Dam. Todd Kennelly made a Gumby reference. Taz said this is a cartoon from 1992. I think he said 82. Either way. Yeah. If he said 82, he's only off by 20 years. Gumby is old, everyone. So the idea of the finish was a good one. 
tell you the idea first. Rob would have the match won. He would go up to the top, but instead of doing a frog splash, he would try to show off and do a 450. And uh, Kenny would move. Rob's arrogance would cost him. He would splat onto the mat, and then Kenny would pin him. That would have been an excellent finish. What happened was, Kenny moved, Rob splatted, Kenny made the cover, and as he was making the cover, Rob's shoulder came up, and Earl Hebner enforced the rules and refused to count. Yep. So they and what happened? They stared at each other for a while. Absolutely fell apart. They grabbed each other's hand, they threw a punch at the same time, they sold at the same time, and finally Kenny like manhandled him up and hit a sloppy version of his finisher for the win. That sucked. Well, what are you going to do? New champion. He's the, yeah, that's right. He's the new champion. It's really that hard to figure out what to do when someone can, when the finish gets screwed up. Apparently. I mean, they were both like completely out to lunch. Nobody took charge. Like, okay, I'm going to do my move now. Yeah. Angle ran into Sting. Looked at his list of names for his team and said one of them was a huge risk. Aces and eights all came out. Devon just ran his mouth for a while. Wasn't Taz supposed to be their mouthpiece, by the way? Yes. Oh, he's not. Devon still does all the talking. Uh, they finally gave Mike Knox a name. Ready? Knox. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sting was calling him Knox repeatedly a while back. I guess so. They must spell it like uh, K-N-O-C-K-S or something. Everyone go to your... Uh, if, you, if you have a young child who has an art product at home, go to their... Box of crayons, go to the Crayola crayons, pull up orange, stare at this for a while, observe it. That was the color of Luke Gallo's skin. Comically overdone spray tan. Let's uh, see how you spell Knox. You go to the TNA website? Yeah. Maybe it's K-N-O-C-K-S. Let's see. You, uh, oh, yep, K-N-O-X, that's it. It's just Knox. It took them months to think of this. The Ace and Eights came out to reveal their lethal lockdown team of Devon, Anderson, Doc, Garrett, and Knox. So they don't have uh, first names, although everyone on the TNA team except Magnus does. Garrett's a first name. Last names. I don't know. Yeah, All right, go one. on. So Sting brings out his team. It's Samoa Joe, James Storm, and uh, Magnus. And counting himself, that is four. So there's a fifth man. Anderson is uh, taking has taken the mic. He's demanding to know who Sting's fifth partner is. And Sting says it's gonna be Showtime. Anderson says, Yeah, yeah, we know that's your catchphrase. Who's your partner gonna be? And Sting says it's Showtime. And this repeats three or four times. And finally, who should appear in the ring behind the aces and eights? But Showtime, Eric Young. And a brawl broke out, and the faces cleared the ring, and they all celebrated together. I thought that was clever. I thought that was some legitimately well-written stuff. And it makes sense. Because Eric Young got beat up by the Aces and Eights months ago, and he's back for revenge. Yeah. Great. So this is fun. Had our first profile of the Gut Check competitors. The Gut Check women both had incredibly irritating names. First one was Evilese Falez. Yeah. Pronounced Evil Ease. So she, according to you, she had been on Tough Enough. I have blocked all memory from that show from my mind. She had done some MMA. They showed her doing mixed martial arts, which is largely just focusing on her ass. She did some stand-up, which you were not a fan of. She talked about not getting along with her mother and crying about this. And then she said she had everything it took to be a star, and she said this in as flat and boring a manner as possible. Real name is Ivelisse Velez, but... Apparently, they want to have copyright. So they've changed to Evilese Felez. Isn't the idea of like uh, owning the name so that someone doesn't go somewhere else and use the name? Or something or something close to it? Yes. Why? <laughs> I don't get it. Zima Ion used to be Shima, Shima Zion. Now he's Zima Ion. I believe that's how it was. Shima, maybe it was Shima Ion. Anyway, point is, uh, really? So if he goes on the independent scene, no one's going to know who he is yeah. because you changed the name to something virtually identically the same. I don't know. Maybe I just don't understand the point of this. Angle was dragging a camera crew around backstage. And she was on Tough Enough, by the way. Yeah. She was blonde 
at the time, for those of you that don't remember. The second gut check competitor was Lady Tapa. Lady, not L-A-D-Y. L-E-I apostrophe D, Lady. That actually made me angry. Well, she's Tongan, Vinny. Is that really how they spell it and pronounce it? Yes. Hmm. Actually. If, it, if, it, if that's legitimate and not just a pun with the word lay. No, I think that's that's the actual name. Well, then, I, then I'm an idiot. Which is always, always an option. But it sounds like something somebody tried to get creative with the word lay and make a dumb name out of it. So, she's the barbarian's niece. She also cried a lot. Because the barbarian is her uncle, and he trained her, and that meant a lot to her. And they showed her working out a lot. Too much crying on the show. So we had the match. Lady Tapa versus Evil Lise Velez. They both need to be signed immediately. This was significantly better than Velvet Sky versus Tara earlier on the show. Either Evil Lise is tiny, or Tapa is enormous, or both. But there's this giant woman in the ring. She's doing things she's like... She's a, a barbarian's niece. Yeah. <laughs> but what does that tell you? Well, she's probably pretty big. She's doing things like a one-handed neck hanging tree and uh, standing upright as Ivelisse is trying guillotines and sleepers on her. Tapa, besides being enormous, also has natural charisma and Felez is doing athletic things like her Ranas look great. And finally, Felez got the win with a guillotine, choking the monster out. This match was fun, and by all rights, they should both be signed. Yeah, I thought it was a, uh, a very fun match. I think there'd be room for... Actually, honest to God, uh, your best bet would be to sign Lady. Because at least she's she's different. Yeah. Ivelisse is another hot girl in TNA. There's a million of them. You know, and, and Lady Tapa is, is a great, uh, she's she's the awesome Kong style big monster. They had a great big person, little person match. Yeah. So uh, bring in bring in the monster and have her run through all the women. Till she gets to Gail Kim. <laughs> Coincidentally. Anyway, yeah, I enjoyed this. Austin Aries approached Jeff Hardy backstage, said he was cheering for him. He took a subtle jab at uh, Jeff saying, you know, Hulk's in Ray's corner. In a video package on AJ Styles' wife and family and friends, they flew out to Gainesville or wherever he's from, spoke to what I assume is his actual wife and his actual friend, and they were talking about how over the past year, all the stuff with Claire Lynch and all the uh, uh, stuff with Cass and Daniels, they never knew where AJ was or if they should trust him. They said he was acting differently. He had not been the same man over the past year as they had known for... Uh, all their lives and needed him to be a husband and father again. And his wife got upset and couldn't talk anymore. And his, his friend was still talking when the, the interview was interrupted. AJ arrived, came in the room, unshaven, hair undone, looked exactly like Tony leader. And I know he's not listening to these shows, which is a shame, but he saw the cameras, got angry, stormed out, rode off on a giant motorcycle. And that was it. There's a hilarious picture of him and his hairdo on the TNA website, so check it out. All right. He had a video recap of Robbie E. and Robbie T. breaking up. And then Robbie E. was in the ring saying that sometimes a bro had to admit when there was a bigger bro and a better bro. He called Rob Terry down to the ring. He apologized for slapping him. So he was not going to be jealous anymore. He wanted to do one more bro off so Rob Terry could show the people uh, what he could do and give them what they want. So they play the music, and Robbie E. did one of the great bad dances you will ever see. Fantastic stuff. And he left the ring, and they, Terry started fist pumping and flexing, and he was going to dance. When Robbie E. returned, he had a giant portrait of himself that he broke over Rob Terry's head. Bastard. <laughs> and he was celebrating and pumping his fist and being a wacky heel, and behind him, Rob Terry is rising like Godzilla coming out of the sea. Fire burning out of his eyes. And finally, Robbie e turned around and saw him and screamed and ran away. I love Robbie E. Robbie e can make everything great. And this is going to be a lot of fun. And then you will have Rob Terry babyface, and that will be the end of him. You know, if it weren't for, like, the uh, the new movies, Godzilla is an even more dated reference than Gumby. I may be right. Austin Aries, uh... Tried to give Bully Ray his support. Ray blew him off, sent him backing. 
Angle stormed into a building saying he was going to find the Aces and Eights. And uh, given that like 50 minutes passed before we saw what happened next, this must have been a very large building. Had the main event, Bully Ray and Jeff Hardy versus Bad Influence. Great match. It was, of course, very good. It was it, it felt way too short. That's probably just because these guys are all really good and they deserve more time. Ray's comeback in particular and the way Kaz and Daniels were bumming for him was awesome. And Ray is working on a bad quad. Yeah. So eventually they uh, pinned Daniels with an electric chair and Hardy sent on. And as soon as they got the win, it was to the back. Classic TNA. So it's been like six months or whatever. The Aces and Nates have been around. And we've only seen footage, footage and videos that they have chosen to release from their secret hideaway where they kidnapped Joe Park and held him captive for weeks. Well, Kurt Angle found it. He found their their cave. He went through. He beat everyone up. He found the boss, attacked him, laid him out, threw him down on the ground, tore his mask off. We cannot see the brand masked person or the unmasked person. We only saw Kurt saying, how could you? How could you? And then the other aces and ace guys all showed up to beat him up. So uh, presumably Kurt will still be kidnapped next week. He better be, because otherwise he should be tweeting that uh, D'Lo was yeah, part of aces and eights. Make one phone call. Hey, guys, it's D'Lo. Should be noted that if you go to the TNA website, the mask guy is in fact listed as the VP. So there's yet another higher power. There's a higher power that has not been seen. Yeah. Aces and eights. Eric Bischoff, I'm sure. So anyway, that was uh, that was a show. I was actually more infuriated when they went to the back after the the uh, the uh, X title win. I mean, granted, the finish was all screwed up and everything like that. You can't really show a replay. But it was like he won the title, he celebrated for a second, and bam, never saw him again. Yeah, that's also true. That's also true. For the record, I searched for L-E-I apostrophe D. I'm seeing things like to receive a lay when arriving in Hawaii. Jokes about best laid plans, laid to rest, laid back gourmet dinner. Things to do in Oahu, get laid. <laughs> Nothing about a name. Well, so I, I I feel better. I'll soon find out. Perhaps I'm still wrong, but 